Hey, can you hear me? Now can you hear me? Yeah, I can. Okay. Look at you, old bearded man, bearded wonder. Dude, that was weird. Okay. So I went to register. Yeah. Apparently, uh, so because I'm a co-host, yeah. I couldn't register for the, the webinar. So I had to change my email to my like my my go-to like old email address. And then it let me register and get on, but it wouldn't let me actually sign in under Jeff at Professionals at Play. That's odd. It's really weird. I'm sorry, man. Technology. Yeah. <laughs> Sucks. Can you, uh, Alexa, play chill lounge music. Alexa, play chill lounge music. Play chill lounge music. I always get in arguments with her. <laughs> it's useless. Can you hear that at all? Little bit. Oh. And we are recording, just so you know. Yeah. We are recording and we are live. Are we live online? Uh, not yet. Gotcha. I do that about three minutes before. Perfect. So uh, I'll just, so yeah, I'll, uh, I'll introduce you and you can introduce me. Um, so I'm going to start out with these uh, cartoons to get people to laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. <laughs> I, I showed that to Becky last night when she got into bed and she couldn't stop giggling like for five minutes. <laughs> I love that one. <laughs> right? It's people... our it's our genre. If, if there are 13 people like, what's going on TikTok? There's going to be certain people that are like, oh, I get that. I you know. I totally get that. Yeah. So then you, then me, then blah, 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 and we'll just go all the way through. Cool. Perfect. Oh, and I was going to start off at a, at a game after um, this slide. Uh-huh. Um, just so everybody's in, in, in what you do is tell them to get a piece of pen and paper and put it on their head and then draw Jeff McLaughlin in his beard. And they're like, well, oh, put a circle. Okay, give him hair, give him lots of hair, give him some glasses, right? And then you show it like this. Oh, I love see, it. See the drawings. Oh, that's hilarious. So yeah, no, I, I saw it on a webinar once. I was like, that's pretty good. Oh, I love it. That's just hilarious. Draw the boss. Yeah. Yeah, exactly, right? And and when the boss says, all right, we're drawing me, it's even better. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Sweet, man. So I can't see myself. Where am I? There we go. Okay, now I got it. Now I can see what I kind of look like. So it should look be like don't want to look like too side. much like a dork. I'm glad we color coordinated and we both wore glasses. Oh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> I can take my shirt off, but then everybody would barf. <laughs> I was gonna say, yeah, I was like, okay, I should wear I was wearing a t-shirt earlier and I'm like, oh, okay, should I put on a, a fancier shirt? And I'm like, yeah, I should. Yeah. And then I'm like, that was that was one button too high. There we go. Now I can breathe. No, I, I was talking to a friend of mine, she's a, a coach, like digital marketing kind of coach yesterday. And I was asking her about that. I said, one thing I've always like, man, if I could just lose 30 pounds, I'd be that much more engaging. So she's like, You are who you are. Mm -hmm. You know, if if you want to lose 30 pounds so you feel better. And for you, do it. But, and I was like, yeah, fair enough. Cause I mean, like Gary V, right? Or you have other guys that are, you know, always dressed up in a three piece suit. So be yourself. I'm not a three piece suit guy. I don't, I don't wear ties. The only time you'll see me in a tie is if, uh, if, if, if somebody's know? dead, probably me. <laughs> not a good day for me if I'm wearing a tie. <laughs> and I could see you ripping off your own tie, even though you're dead. It's <laughs> 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 great. <Screw laughs> <laughs> so i heard the most terrifying thing this morning on npr are you ready for what? this as if 2020 was as awesome as it possibly could be yeah. we now have to worry about the arctic tundra catching on fire from something called zombie fires i've been worried about that <laughs> i wasn't worried about it until i uh you know just listened to it today <laughs> i thought great We've got these fires that burn so hot, they go underground into the peat, yep. underneath the permafrost. And then apparently when the permafrost starts to melt in the spring, the yep. fires can pop back up and start instantaneously anywhere. That's weird that they can burn without, well, maybe I guess because of the peat, there is air trapped in there. I know, tiny, just enough that it keeps it, it's like a little coal, a little ember, and then it just like seeps to the surface. It's just bizarre. It was like, thank you NPR for, you know, all the wonderful things you do. 
Perfect. and terrifying the world with zombie fires. All right, it Happy looks like people are uh, people are hopping on here. Sweet. Hey, Dalen and Ward, how are you? If uh, if you want to chat or type in, maybe there isn't a, a chat box on here. But anyway, there's Ward, Dalen, Clayton. Thanks for being here. I'm going to um, everybody meet Jeff uh, for your early birds, which is great. My dad always taught me to be five minutes early. And here we are <laughs> six minutes before. So I'm going to. Perfect. Sign on to the Facebook Live, and then we should be good to go. So let's see here, uh, Dalen and Ward, where are you guys from? I just put it in the chat, chat box there. Oh, perfect. Favorite pet's name. Can you have a favorite pet, like a favorite kid? <laughs> I don't know. Which one's my favorite? The one that, that does the, the, the things that I want them to the most. <laughs> the one that does the chores and goes to bed on time. <laughs> the one that cost me the least amount of money over the long run. <laughs> That's my favorite kid. Yeah. Wow. We got Walla Walla, Dalen's in Walla Walla, Ward's in Cocoa Beach, Florida. Okay. That sounds lovely and warm. And Langley, BC. So yeah, BC, Clayton, you're going to be like nice and chilly like oh, we are. Oh, I bet that's Clayton Latane. Oh, yeah. Maybe. I know a Clayton uh, Latane. Clayton, Clayton Wagner. 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 I probably said that wrong. I'm so sorry. Okay. I taught kindergarten. Forgive me. My reading skills are not up to par. <laughs> Your play skills are awesome. Play but skills are on point. <laughs> Never be late is my motto. Me too. Until I met my wife. <laughs> yeah. Time changed. <laughs> <laughs> as much as i love her and i hope she's not on here <laughs> she's not <laughs> if she pops up i will be on my very very bestest behavior <laughs> absolutely i even combed my beard today for everybody so oh i did get correct okay cool awesome thank you clayton there's so many things on the screen it's crazy it's awesome all right, let me, uh, I'm just trying to. Hold on people, we are not uh, the most technically inclined here. So I'm just getting this set up for the old Facebook people. Oh, maybe and we're already streaming, live streaming. I was gonna say Greg is like light years ahead of me in technology beard. maybe not beard growing skills but technology yes preparing you're killing me smalls <laughs> i know dalen he's great man oh my uh, goodness if you ever come down to walla walla dalen is a, a connoisseur of uh fine beers and wine and he would uh he's a good time when we hang out excellent Greg, question. Did you do a presentation at Canadian University last year? Canadian University? No, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> I, I could have. I don't know. What, oh, it's, uh, so is that a university? It's not a Canadian University, because I'm assuming there's a bunch of those. Oh, I did a, a, uh, for the university here in Walla Walla last year. Okay. So and now if I can find... All right, can you see my screen, Jeff? Uh, nope, not yet. There, there we, we are. go. Perfect. Yep. Cool. All right, and I'm just looking, and you can you can see the uh, the old chat box, eh? Uh, yep, I can pull that up too. I can see the chat box. There we go. The chat box. All right, perfect. I got that too. All right. Well, I think we're almost, well, it is 11 o'clock. I think we are uh, streaming live here. Let me just double check once more. Yeah, no, it looks like, uh, looks like we are streaming. And if not, we'll put it on afterwards. That's okay. how we roll. <laughs> With All right, everybody. Thank you so much uh, for being here. Uh, my name is Greg and my colleague is Jeff McLaughlin. How are you, Jeff? I'm doing awesome. How are you doing, Greg? Good, good. Uh, we are really excited. Uh, we have both been working 
Jeff longer than I have working from home. Um, but uh, when we get to get on these webinars and share what we know uh, with people, we're really excited. So if you're just jumping on uh, the Zoom, uh, put in the chat box where you're from. Uh, let us know how you found us. Uh, if you're on Facebook Live, um, feel free to hit the share button. Uh, that gets the word out. And because a lot of us, uh, over 65% of us now, apparently are working from home and uh, probably might be a good trend. Uh, a couple of things, if you have a pen and paper, uh, grab that, uh, take some notes and whatnot. Um, just got a couple, we got a game and just got some uh, other things. Uh, you're getting a pen and paper. Uh, turn your cell phones on, uh, grab some water uh, and get fun. Uh, <laughs> get fun. Uh, enjoy this engaging and fun webinar. Uh, also too, uh, huge, do not put away your credit cards. We don't have anything to sell you. Um, Jeff and I are doing this because we've learned a lot over the last eight months and we want to share with you because we know what it's like to miss our colleagues, to be stuck inside with our dog, doing laundry in between stuff and whatnot. Do you have anything else to add, Jeff, before we... I was going to say, I already have one load of laundry done. I'm working on my second liter of water. I've dropped off the kids at school and the dog at the daycare, and I've been to the orthodontist. So it's been a busy morning already. Sounds and like I've been point. on a coaching call and a Zoom call for business already. It's it's perfect. Well, here you go. Here we are. There we go. Life happens between everything else. It is. And it's just, I mean, I remember going to the office and you're nine to five and like if you had to do something or whatnot, you run home quickly and do it. But yep. here we are, and uh, let's get started. So I know uh, I'm tired of Zoom uh, <laughs> meetings. Not this one, obviously, right, Jeff? Mm -hmm. But we're on it a lot. I mean, when we coach uh, our clients, when we do virtual speaking events, and um, it, it's interesting how Zoom has evolved. And so here's a quick uh, cartoon my sister sent me yesterday um, about uh, Zoom uh, on team meetings. So. <laughs> As you can see on the left, that's a team call or team call with video. Very, very different. It's the same. It's not even the same pumpkin. Wait, that's, <laughs> I just noticed that. Like it's a, a deranged pumpkin on the left and a, a semi-normal pumpkin on the right. Oh, um, here is something else that will resonate with you if you're over 30 and if you're under 30 and on TikTok probably won't, but here we go. Um, there we go. Things meatloaf would do for love. No? <laughs> Just me and Jeff? Nobody else is laughing? <laughs> if you're laughing at these cartoons, you can put it in the chat. Put it in the comments on Facebook. Give um, us an LOL or something. Yeah. An LOL, happy face, whatever, or grumpy face. If this is not funny uh, and you're not having fun, you can do that as well, too. And Thank we'll, you. Tammy uh, we'll... gave us an LOL. All right, cool. She, she understands the meatloaf reference. Oh, word got us one, too. <laughs> Yeah, she's over three. Dalen. Perfect. <laughs> nice. Meatloaf was great. Thanks, Dalen. <laughs> All right. And uh, before we uh, we get into the, the heart of things and, and get going, I got a quick little game. And this is uh, a bonus tip, if you will. Uh, if you are uh, a leader and leading the team call, it's even better. Um, or if you're doing a webinar like we are or a team call or with clients, you're coaching a group of, of people. It's a great little game. So if you guys have a pen, and a paper, uh, you can do this at home. Um, and then uh, I'll just, we'll, we'll go for it. So what we're going to do is uh, take uh, your, your piece of paper, pad of paper, place it on top of your head. And if you're right-handed, I would suggest using your right hand. Um, <laughs> if you're left-handed, uh, but take the pen in the dominant hand. And we are going to draw a picture of Mr. Jeff McLaughlin. So we're gonna take about 10 seconds, maybe 30, 40. Uh, it's probably gonna look like a Picasso by the time we're done. So, you know, if you're drawing a picture of Jeff, you gotta have his face, which is a circle, I would assume, or maybe like, more like an avocado. Um, and then you gotta give him glasses. See if I can do this. Um, I think I did it. Did you? Uh, Let's you, see. You gotta give him lots of hair. And then the beard is gonna be down here. And his nose, someone over here. All right, you, you ready, Jeff? We'll, we'll show everybody what we're doing. I'm ready. All right, one, two, three. Oh, wow. Wow. That. <laughs> That's pretty accurate, actually. I'm, I'm surprised. That's about the best art I could possibly do, even with looking. Exactly. So if, uh, if anyone wants 
these uh, pieces of artwork, they'll be for sale uh, later on on uh, eBay. All right, let's get to the heart of it. Um, do a quick introduction. Uh, Jeff and I know each other uh, for about eight months now. We met through a, a group run by Jake Ballantyne. Mm -hmm. uh, he helps speakers, coaches, and authors. Uh, he's a great coach, a great human being. And that's where we met. Jeff is up in Coeur d'Alene. And uh, Jeff, uh, a great dude. He's, he's a speaker, uh, a coach, and a trainer. He, this dude has given over a thousand speeches. And he'll go into schools and talk for like six hours to middle school kids. So he very thick skin. Like <laughs> he shouldn't town through anything if you can talk to kids for six hours. Uh, he's got two boys, uh, a, a great husband and a father and uh an outdoor an avid outdoorsman so but uh it, it's been fun getting to know jeff and uh we're actually going to um the uh boot camp yeah mind capture boot camp next month yeah with tony so yeah. um on the be awesome so that'll Very be much looking forward to that. all right awesome and my friend my good friend uh greg katner here not only is he a phenomenal human being uh just an excellent all-around dude but uh, professional stand-up comedian. Incredible. Has amazing skills. <laughs> Phenomenal bonus dad. I love his daughter's just great. Oh my gosh. Love it. Uh, has worked with some great companies. Obviously you can see them right there. You got Nike, SAP, NLH, the NHL. Sorry. That's the national hockey league. I had to look that one up because, uh, I'm from the States and I don't even know what hockey is. Apparently it's, you run around and hit people with sticks. It's a Canadian yeah. national sport. It's awesome. Uh, and the MLS major league soccer. That's awesome. Which I do understand that one. Uh, yep. The rest of the world calls it football. Um, he's done over $12 million in sales in his time in sales and is an avid golfer. And not just an avid golfer, but a really good golfer. I'm good at making divots. He's actually good at putting like putting and driving and all that kind of stuff. I can, I can drive the golf cart and carry bags. That's, that's what I'm good at. So, uh, but all around great dude. And oh my gosh, he is so entertaining and his insights and wisdom uh, with people working in the coaching realm, with teamwork, uh, with leadership is just, just top notch. So Great. Well, thanks, Jeff. I appreciate that. Uh, checks in the mail. Um, <laughs> I just, I, I told you to put down your phones, but mine rang and, and here's my buddy, Derek. Uh, <laughs> hey, that's pretty good. So he, he texted it and I'm like, Derek, I think you're the winner. You're way better than Jeff and I are. So <laughs> thanks for playing along, Derek. Oh man. All right. So here we go. Uh, your own virtual water cooler uh, at the home office. Anything you want to say about this, Jeff, and, and what you've heard from your clients? And you know, it's funny, party. a number of my clients are still at work. And so they actually have the water cooler and the coffee shop in the business. Uh, a, a smaller percentage of my clients are all working from home. And the biggest thing that they miss is the moments between the work where they get to engage with the people that they work with. And that's the biggest thing that they're missing is that camaraderie, the ability to talk to other people and to, to just, you know, whether it's about work at home, families, whatever, they really miss that. And so that's why we got the virtual water cool, how to, how to engage and be a part of everybody else's life. At, uh, even though you're in the home office. Absolutely. So there's challenges and uh, we wanted to share some of the challenges that we've heard uh, from you, from people on Facebook, engaging with others, our, our clients and the research out there and give you some solutions today that you can walk away with. If you have a zoom meeting this afternoon, you can play the, the drawing game. Uh, you can throw up a cartoon or whatnot. It just gets people in the right frame of mind because I, I was just talking to a buddy. Um, he's also a coach and he was on Zoom for six hours straight. And afterwards, he just went, <laughs> my mind just, you know, and, and so I suggested to him, um, you know, just you block it out. So you got 15 minutes in between your Zoom met meetings, right? That way, you just kind of gives you a refresher, uh, refreshes your brain, walk around the block and whatnot. So here's some of the challenges. Why don't you uh, let's go through the challenges, Jeff? Real quick, obviously you guys can see them right there. You got the mental stress. Uh, you've got the loneliness of being in the off uh, of, of being at home, unless you work from home. Usually, and you're used to that. Uh, time management is much trickier when you're used to the office environment. That nine to five. Uh, the distractions. I've got a cat that was scratching at the door a few minutes ago. <laughs> um, <laughs> there is no water cooler. I yeah. mean, you got a sink. That's cool and all, but very different. Um, that, that feeling of being valued. Um, it's a, it's a, the, the screen unfortunately presents uh, an obstacle to sometimes those simple little things of like just walking over and giving somebody literally a pat on the back. Um, 
you know, and then the productivity, uh, we thought it was going to go up, but I think that you might, I don't know if you're going to share a statistic on that, but I believe the productivity has actually started to, to go down. Right. Um, uh, and so it's interesting. Those are definitely some of the challenges. Those are also challenges that people sometimes face in the, the real world and in the work environment in, in the office. So yes. they're, they're very similar. Exactly. And if, if you're on the, the Zoom call or on uh, Facebook Live, just type in the chat box, which one is most relevant to you? Is it the mental stress? Are you lonely? Are you missing your colleagues? Uh, do you struggle? Uh, one of mine is time management. How do I get the kid to school, the dog fed, the lawn done, the chores done, the work done, the calls, prospecting, all that kind of stuff. So is it mental stress, loneliness, time management, uh, distractions around the house? Uh, having no water cooler, not having that feel, but just put them in the chat. Uh, do you feel valued working from home or how's your productivity level? So, okay, we got uh, the lonely lacking connections with colleagues. Absolutely. Uh, Derek's saying mental stress. Uh, yeah. My brother is saying loneliness, uh, time management, time management, yeah, and no water cooler. Correct, Dalen. Yeah, well, I'll try and problem. buy one for you, Dalen, and, and drop it off this afternoon. <laughs> Uh, time management, connection with employees, uh, says Tammy. Distractions from Lori, uh, Tanya, no water cooler. No Friday uh, pub gathering after uh, Yeah, the big, yeah that's right. a big one. That's Fair like, a, I've got multiple clients that have actually talked about how they, they really miss the, like on a Friday or Thursday or Friday, whatever day they determined, they would actually go out with a number of their colleagues and go grab a beer after work. And they're like, we missed that. Like, it's not the same, just shooting the breeze and stuff. So yeah, and that yeah, no absolutely. separation between work and home is a big one too. Yeah, yeah, oh, what Nancy said, yeah. And and on that pub thing, uh, I've heard of companies, you know, if it's a smaller team meeting and you have eight people on your team, they've actually found, like sent out an email and said, hey, what's your favorite drink? Um, whether it's beer or wine or cider or coffee. And then the day before they drop off whatever that person wants to drink before the meeting so everybody gets on and you just it's that warm fuzzy feeling that your boss actually took the time to say hey i value you what do you want you know and then they get on and they have you know their their call at five o'clock on friday and it kind of gives it mm -hmm. as much as we can that yep. yeah gives you a little closure to the week yeah exactly so here are some of the solutions uh we'll go over and if uh, like I said, at the end, uh, we'll have a question and answer at the end. If any of you have questions, you can either type them in the chat and we'll get back to you, um, or we can talk about them at the end. But some of the solutions are eat the frog, uh, starting your day off, uh, getting the worst thing out of the way. Um, engagement, how to be more uh, engaging online. How to have a plan. I know some of the people in the chat were saying, you know, I get distracted. I'm not sure how to fit everything in. Uh, take frequent breaks. Uh, if you're a manager and you don't agree with us, we can have a conversation about that. But research shows that if you, you know, if you're working for a half hour and you take a five minute break, you walk around the block or, you know, you change the laundry, those kinds of things, it resets your mind almost. So you're more productive when you come back uh, to your desk. Uh, laughter is huge. Uh, obviously, I've uh, toured the world doing stand up comedy. Um, and the benefits of laughter and how it, it, it releases those, you know, endorphins, uh, the to not do list, a tongue tied for me and, uh, a gratitude text as well too, uh, can help move us along. Want to go, uh, plan one, Jeff. Tip sure. one. So a lot of uh, experts, obviously in productivity, talk about this, uh, the planning of tomorrow starts tonight. You, you, you got to plan. You got to actually have a plan in order to execute it, right? Any sports team you look at, every time they go into a game, they have a plan versus who they're playing. And so they know what they're going to do, how they're going to do it, who's going to cover who for what, you know, defense, offense, what the whole plan is. They actually have a plan. If you don't have one, it's really hard to execute on it. So a lot of people say, you know, plan tomorrow, tonight. So I tend to go, I try and plan my whole week on a Sunday. So I try and go for the whole week. <laughs> Who plans tomorrow tonight? <laughs> I don't know. Greg asked that. That's a good one. Type it in the text. If you are one of those people that either plans a day ahead, I like to plan a week ahead. And then I have to look a month ahead if I'm traveling or more, depending on where I'm going and what I'm doing to make sure that I have all the stuff at home taken care of. If I'm going to be on the road, my wife's got to take care of everything. So always having a plan, making sure that you know where you're going. That way, when life throws you those road bumps, which it will do, 
um, you can you can take them as they come and still try and execute your plan to the best you possibly can. Um, start start fast doing the things that are the most important. And I think we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, and Eat the Frog, which is a big one. Brian Tracy, love that book. Uh, do the hardest thing first. Get it out of the way because as soon as you've done the hardest thing, if you've eaten a frog the very first thing in your day, great. Everything else is going to be gravy after that. Okay, run towards the war. Yes, Ward. Same thing. Eat the frog, run towards the war. The roar, R-O-A-R, not W-A-R. Big difference there. Um, you know, uh, the, having a plan uh, down there helps to remove anxiety because you know what's expected. You know what's coming. So there's no, oh my gosh, what did I forget? And you have that anxiety of like, oh my gosh, I totally forgot something. And so what are you pulling up there? All right. Gotcha. Technical difficulties. Keep going, buddy. <laughs> Got it. And so if you have all those things in place, you have the plan, you plan for the next day, you eat that frog, um, it, you've reduced your anxiety, you're actually going to be more productive because you are able to actually focus on doing the things that you need to do most so that you can be the most successful. Um, I, I don't know if you've all heard it, but a, a failure to plan is a plan to fail. And we know that that's true because if you just wander around and just kind of get some stuff done here, get some stuff done here, the meat of what you really need to do has to be focused. And if you're focused with a laser-like focus, you can totally just zero in on the things that need to be done that are going to produce the most value. Uh, Clayton said, plan my week on Sunday, system sell. It's the system. You have to have a system in place to be successful. If you do not have the system, it's really hard to be successful. So those are some of them. And then the last one is that me time, having that uh, scheduled time for yourself to take those breaks, to make sure that you're actually taking care of yourself so that you can execute on the plan. Awesome. Yeah. Perfect. Any questions? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, <laughs> we're hanging in there. We're getting this done, folks. Um, apparently, I, it's not on Facebook Live, so I will, uh, I'll put the recording up. Uh, apparently, Facebook is having issues. Um, just like I do most of the time, but uh, we'll get that up to, uh, to Facebook for sure. All right, number two, uh, tip number two is timeouts. Um, I've been a big believer in this. Uh, I've got an app on my phone uh, that it plays um, um, white noise music for 20 minutes. And then uh, I take a five minute break. So I break my hour up into three different, three different sections, if you will. And I've really found that when I do that, I can be more focused for that 20 minutes. And, and sometimes it doesn't work. You know, if, if I'm in flow and, I, and I'm, I'm really after it, I'll keep going. But what it does is when we have a timeout, uh, screen time, as we all know, I, I've got a 16-year-old a, a stepdaughter, uh, a great kid. But when we know that when there's too much screen time, uh, the, the synapses don't work as well, right? It, it's stressful. And, and even for us, I mean... I remember, you know, when I got out of college, we didn't have computers. That's how old I am. But, you know, we weren't sitting in front of a screen. And when I was doing sales, I was out on the road, um, that sort of thing. But when you do have a timeout um, and you get a chance to laugh or whatnot, it releases that dopamine in your head. And it gives you that, uh, that happiness, um, calms your nerves, and it refocuses your mind. So if you do take timeouts and very similar to sports, Jeff and I are both into sports. Uh, if you know, you're hockey, you're down three, two, there's three minutes to go. Um, you just got on the power play. You're going to call a timeout. So you've got 30 seconds to a minute to refocus and remind everybody, what do we have to do next? So having a timeout is really brings more productivity and it recharges both our bodies and our minds. Yeah. Tip number three. Laughter, got to have laughter, super important. Uh, Greg already mentioned it. It's that dopamine release. It gives that little dopamine hit in your brain, which actually uh, helps to relieve stress. That dopamine helps to relieve a little bit of the cortisol release if you're under stress or if you're under pressure to do things. Um, and unfortunately, as, a, as a, a lot of Americans tend to be chronically stressed, which is really bad because that cortisol is supposed to go into your system, fight or flight, and then leave. But what happens is it's, we are so stressed out that it just stays there. And then there's this whole myriad of health issues that happens because of stress. And so if we can actually have those moments of laughter, um, those gut busting, knee slapping, pee your pants, crying, tears streaming down your face kind of laughter, that helps to flush that cortisol from our systems. 
and actually helps us to, uh, number one, be a little bit healthier, but number two, really helps our minds to focus because we've had that dopamine hit. It's like, oh, okay, you got a deep breath and now you can go again. Um, number two, I obviously it burns calories. Everybody, I, I'm serious. I wish, I wish laughter and there's actually laughter yoga. I don't know if you've ever seen yeah. it. I, I will sometimes watch that just to laugh because it's <laughs> hilarious. I mean, people like laughing. I had some gal do this at a, at a business conference last year, and I was I was laughing hysterically at everybody else who was laughing, who were probably laughing at me as I was laughing at them. We were all laughing at each other, but we all felt so much better afterwards, and we were like revitalized and ready to go for the rest of the day. Um, laughter truly is the best medicine. Like it really, really does. It helps. It's good for the soul. It's good for the mind. Helps reset everything. It's just awesome. Uh, Greg, you, we got down there the Friday funnies. You know what? It helps. Just those little moments, those little tiny things, like your favorite meme, or like we posted earlier, the pumpkins, um, you know, or the you know the meatloaf thing. That yeah. you know those little things, just that little tiny bit of like, <laughs> you know what? That helps, and that really makes a difference in somebody's day. So if you can schedule that time for laughter, if you can actually make the time to make it happen, um, don't just like. I mean, you got to be intentional about things. I'm all about intentionality, which is yep. why we have the plan. You know, if you schedule those me breaks, great. Put a little laughter and joy in there. Watch a cat meme video. I don't know, whatever it is that makes you giggle and laugh or like helps to fill you up. Do that because you need it. You have to have to take care of yourself. Yeah, absolutely. You know, on that Friday, funny, I... I don't know if I heard it from someone or just came up with it by myself, but I've, you know, I've done sales for 28 years and that's really um, beneficial to me. Every Friday I would send out uh, a funny uh, HR approved, obviously cartoon, uh, far sides, always a safe bet. So uh, now it's October, I'll send out a Halloween one. And people remember that when people laugh and you make somebody laugh, they'll remember that because we're out in this world of sales. If you are in sales, um, there's a lot of ways to buy, especially with the internet now, right? But if I'm talking to a client and I can follow up with a quick email on a Friday morning and just saying, hey, I thought thought of you, I saw this cartoon, have a great weekend. And there's no ask. I've gotten a lot of business from sending out these cartoons. So if you're on the Zoom call and want to get on that list, just type in your email address and I'll fire that off to you as well too. But like you said, like being you. intentional about it, right? Taking yeah. the time out whether it's before we start our day or at the end of the day, you know, I mean, there's, there's stress and family and life and, and politics and everything else. But at the end of the day, if you end it with a good laugh, um, we're much farther ahead. Yep. Tip number four, this is yours. This is your. The to don't right list. Oh. My buddy Dale was like, get control of your ADD. I'm like, I'm trying, man. <laughs> right funny oh cool awesome Heidi wants in on the Friday funnies okay right. so the two don't list I actually learned this one from um our good friend Ryan Dumphy who's just an awesome human being he's all about efficiency and planning and just a really great guy stress reduction and uh he he helped me with the to don't list and so if you have just a blank piece of paper and you divide it into three sections so I now have two lines down the middle okay I got my two sections and I just take a little bit of time the night before to write down all of the things that I need to do the next day. Um, so you can do this daily or you can do it weekly. Uh, Ryan actually has one, which I would love to be able to share with people. That's a, a, it's the, the better to-do list. He's a, adjusted it a little bit, but you basically write down all the things that you need to get done over the next day or two, okay? So you've got that big old list on this call. Then... You're going to look at that list and you're going to prioritize them. What do you really, really need to get done? So what things are the most important uh, to actually accomplish? And so you're going to move the top five. What are the five things that you need to get over there to, that are the most important? So I'm going to pick that one, that one, that one, that one, and that one. Okay. So now my middle list is the next five most important things. Then out of those five, I'm going to pick the top one. What is the number one thing that I need to get done? And I'm going to move it over to the right. So that's the one thing I'm going to focus on. I'm going to focus on this thing right here. And as soon as this gets done, I'll go pick something else from the list and I'll move it over. As soon as I can cross this off, great. I move something else over. Cross this off, I move something else over. Cross this off, I move something else over. And if all of a sudden at the end of the day, I can get through one of those things, I'm very happy. If I can get through two or three or four of those things, then I was super, super efficient that day. So being able to prioritize 
is very important because it's, uh, I know that a lot of people say, what are your priorities? Priorities is a relatively new thing. Previous to 1960, it was priority, singular. It's gotta be one thing because if you have multiple things, you're divided. It's no longer a priority. You now have multiple things going on and you're divided. So you gotta focus on that one thing that moves you further faster. So that's just a quick way to go, what thing is going to make the biggest difference in my day? And you can do that personally with business, with faith, family, friends, anything that you have, uh, you can totally do that with. And it, it's really effective. Great. No, that, that's a great tip. Now, I know you said you plan your whole week on Sunday. Mm -hmm. Is this a list that you would do every morning during the day? Or would you do this on Sunday and, and start it and work through it? So week? I will start it on a Sunday. Um, and then as my wife comes home and brings different things in, she's like, oh, by the way, I forgot to tell you, I've got to do these meetings. So now you got to pick up the kids. I know that those things are super, super important and that um, they, they make a big difference. And so I got to be ready for those things. And if, if it's like really like, hey, by the way, our kid has to be picked up from school at this time or we're in trouble, then that's a, I, that's a becomes a priority. Um, yeah. So I got to make sure that I schedule my things around that. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And for those of you on the webinar, if, if you find this helpful, just type in yes. If this is something that you can take um, and start, you know, if you plan your week on Sunday for the next week or tomorrow, if you work during the weekends, if this is something that would be a benefit, just uh, type in yes. All right. A lot of them. Tammy. I don't know if you guys can hear it, but the, the work from home thing, I got somebody knocking on my front door. <laughs> oh, you got to go. All right. No, I'm not going to go. I might oh. go check and see who it is. I'm like, I'm curious. Is it a guy with a package? Is it? Yeah, exactly. Oh, hopefully. Well, yeah, Christmas is almost here. <laughs> All right. Uh, tip number five, the office, the home office. Uh, a lot of uh, companies now, uh, Google, Amazon, um, Facebook, they are thinking and suggesting that their employees work from home during the pandemic, at least, you know, into 2021, which is crazy. I remember when this started all back in March, I thought, well, maybe, you know, we'll go home for, you know, a week or two or maybe a month. And, and here we are almost November. Um, so, but I found it very key because when I first started working from home, I was out on the kitchen table um, and, you know, I've got a laptop and, and my notes and, and my stacks of paper. And I just found it so very distracting because I was in the living room. Uh, if Becky, my wife would come through to grab something from the kitchen or a drink of water, there I go. It would distract me. So if you can dedicate a specific place in your home to do this, uh, if you can't, you know, do, do what you have, but if you can have a dedicated room, you can shut the door. Um, you can post your hours. Like I, I told Becky and Rachel, Rachel's at school most of the time, you know, till three. Um, but they know that I'm going to be in here. And if my door is open, feel free to come in. But if it's shut, I'm probably in the middle of something or I'm on a webinar or a coaching call. So you can do that. Um, show your personality. I know Jeff is uh, got some curtains in the background, um, <laughs> but um, like I, I'm a hockey guy. So my brother bought me this Jersey, uh, Wayne Gretzky. It's one of the coolest things that I own, um, but this is me. Uh, I do some reading. Uh, I like lamps. Uh, what else do I have here? But make it yourself. And one thing I caution, I know when everybody started doing Zoom, everybody's like getting the virtual background. If you take the time and money and want to do a green screen and do it properly, great. But to me and to a lot of other people I've talked to, when you tap on the, you know, the, the virtual background, people are fading out of the San Francisco bridge or the clouds or what. It's just, it's very distracting. Mm -hmm. um, so set up, you know, the office the way you want to be if you are on Zoom. If you're on coaching calls, doing all sorts of things like that, only do work in the specific work um, office or the, the place that you have designated. Otherwise, you can get distracted. But when I come in here, I'm focused on my job. I'm focused on my clients and I'm focused on the people that I'm serving. Um, I've already kind of mentioned post the office hours. Uh, also to act as if, you know, uh, the first <laughs> the first cartoon that we saw, right? when it's just a, a team call or a video call, it's very different. But when I get up, I intentionally, I get up in the morning, I do my meditation, I do my exercise, I listen to my podcast to motivate me, and then I get dressed and I come into the office. And sure, I've been wearing shorts since March, but right, everybody just sees from here up. But if I was in a raggedy t-shirt, had a hat on, didn't comb my hair, uh, those sorts of things, if we act as if we are in the office, 
we're that much more productive and that much more efficient working from home. Yeah, totally true. By the way, that uh, that virtual background, uh, I, I don't have it here because my wife took it to school with her for her okay. virtual work. Uh, yeah. But I think I ordered uh, for like, I think it was like 15 bucks, a big old backdrop. And yeah. you can get them in, you know, lots of different patterns, anything like that. So it's it's easy to hang up. You can take it on and off real fast and it's right there. So it's it's pretty cool. So it's not the virtual one. It's an actual backdrop okay and you can use for lots of different things did you order my little ponies or what <laughs> i wanted to get unicorns and sasquatches but my <laughs> wife got a brick brick wall instead she okay my beard yeah no exactly <laughs> all right go for tip number six jeff awesome awesome uh i know this seems a little i don't know about crazy but you know uh hydration is so so vitally important uh if your body is 70 percent uh water then you need to drink a lot of water to be hydrated. It actually helps everything. It helps the myelinations in your brain, helps those uh, connections, helps us to be more efficient simply because we're hydrated. Now, this is my second liter of water today. I'll probably drink another two after that, which is a total of four liters in a day. That's over a gallon, right? And so it takes time to work up to that. But when I do drink that gallon of water a day, I feel much more efficient. My body works a little bit better and it helps me to just be a little more clear with my thinking. So uh, typically, it's 50 to 60% of your body weight in ounces. Um, if you've had anything to drink in the uh, alcoholic beverage range the night before, you probably need to add some more. So just the just general FYI, because obviously alcohol dehydrates us, coffee dehydrates us, that kind of thing. Um, water is the key. Water is the key. So make sure it helps flush your system, helps work the mind a little bit better, um, and everything feels you know, you feel like, okay, cool. I can do this. You get actually more energy yeah. just by having the right hydration. No, nope, that's great. Anybody uh, drink a uh, lots of water type in? Yes. If you drink a lot of water or even better type in how many glasses of water do you uh, drink a day? Um, not alcohol. Not how many glasses of wine you drink <laughs> in the home office, but how many glasses of water uh, do you guys uh, drink in a day? It's, it's very keen. I, I, I found it. Um, the more I drink, yeah, sure. I'm making a, a, a at least a gallon daily. Nice. Oh, yeah. A gallon a day. Look at that. Way to go, wow. Daly. There we go. Awesome. We're on the same page. I ate two. Oh, Ward, oh, we got two that. gallons. Oh, wait, Ward no, two, two glasses. Like Clayton obviously is from Canada. He's punched in liters. That's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> what is that in gallons? 14.2. Um, <laughs> I have no idea. That was a long time ago that I was in school. Uh, tip number seven. Music is, is very helpful to pass time and, and keep your mind going. Um, Jeff is a huge Metallica fan. I don't know if I'd recommend blaring Metallica, you know, but, but if, if you're pounding away emails, that might be something you can do. Right. But listen to listening to music while we work um, it, it's background noise and it helps us actually to stay um, uh, focused. <laughs> so it's obviously working for me. Um, but you know, if you put on some chill lounge music or some jazz, whatever your, your favorite thing is, it has an effect on our mind. It makes us more productive. Uh, I'm a tragically hip fan, um, a little bit softer than Metallica, <laughs> but if I'm doing stuff, if I'm writing reports or, or going through emails, stuff that I don't have to be totally focused on, I'll throw on the hip. And if Becky is out running an errand or whatnot, I'll, I will turn it up to, to 10 for sure. What, uh, Anybody on the webinar, what kind of music do you list? Just type in the uh, the chat what kind of music you listen to or what's your favorite band? That'd be interesting as well. Oh, Peachy. I've been rocking the Christmas songs lately. Oh, boy. Um, I know. I, since about June. It helps me. <laughs> <laughs> so it looks like uh, Ward's the only one that uh, listens to music. Mm -hmm. Oh, Classic there we go. Rock. Oh, Journey. Journey all the way. Nice. Greatest, one of the greatest bands of all time. Yeah. Don't Stop Believing. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> pentatonics oh they're also great yeah no uh, okay. we uh we actually saw them they came to our church here about three years ago and it was it was pretty interesting the one guy told the story and um they sang and it was wow it was crazy uh was black keys yep yeah. no some mm -hmm. good music as well too awesome and uh that that is it folks do you have anything else you want to add jeff before we, well here we'll go through this and then we can do the q a but uh, if you want uh, to reach out to Jeff, if you have further questions, um, if you have uh, any relations to schools or whatnot, that would love someone to come in and work with them, uh, a similar kind of talk, but to the, you know, the kids, uh, he does that. 
I will send out the slides to everybody after this as well, too. So cool. you can just, that's Jeff and this is me. Yeah. And that is our thank you. Uh, we really appreciate, I think we're on time. We are. Right? Yeah. 1136. So yeah. we try for 45 minutes. Um, but anything you want to add before we uh, jump into the Q&A, Jeff? Um, you know, I think we covered most of it. Obviously, there's always those individual questions that can pop up. Um, I always like to ask for questions, comments, or rude remarks. You know, hey, Jeff, your face looks funny. I know, I was born this way. Sorry, it's how it works. Um, but yeah, if anybody has any questions at all, um, you know, feel free to reach out to us or type questions in there. Or uh, I don't know if they can go off mute or not. I have no idea. I'm not technologically. Yeah, I'm going to try this here. Yeah. Um, Put it on the, the view screen. I think. Uh, This is where technology, this is, this yeah, is the hardest so just, part for us. You keep talking while I'm letting people uh, oh, cool. talk here. Awesome. Thank you, Doug. Doug said, uh, or Ward. Ward said, nicely done. Thank you. Thank you. I love it. Nancy also commented, uh, type of music depends on your mood. Needs calmness. Old songs from the 50s and 60s. Those are both on my uh, station for my car, by the way. Uh, I need jazz. Jazz your stuff up. Something rock and roll. -y. Yep. Uh, Derek doesn't do music at work very well. Ah. Is it dark, quiet, and cold, Derek? Is it kind of like the just the Zen zone where you just got to focus and, and do stuff? Because I've, I've been there as well. Depends on where I'm at in the world and if, uh, if I've got kids running around. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what I just did. I just hit a button. Now everybody only see one face. Oh. Oh, there we go. Oh, cool. I don't you know what I, something. <laughs> now I can see all the faces. It's cool. Okay, perfect. So if you have any questions, just take yourself off of mute or maybe I need to do. Uh, uh, Ward has a question. He says, do you have a hard and fast time that you start and stop work during the day? I don't because I, uh, I try to do the school schedule as much as I can. So basically I'm 9 a.m. to about 3.30 p.m. is I, I deem those as my work hours. Uh, and I try and get everything done during those times when my wife and kids are at school. Um, Obviously, sometimes things go over. I do see some clients on Saturdays on the weekends uh, because that's the time that we have that works for all of our schedules. Uh, and I do have a couple clients that I talk to in the evenings uh, after work for them. And so uh, it just kind of depends. Those are more likely than not, though. I'm like that 9 to 3.30 kind of a, a range for, for my schedule. I don't know about, how about you, Greg? Uh, I, I try and stay to 8 to 5. Um, I've, I found over the last eight months that my mind really starts petering off about three o'clock. Mm -hmm. So I try and, you know, not every day, I'll be honest, uh, eat the frog, get everything done at the very beginning of the day, the most important stuff, whether it's, you know, uh, obviously my clients come first. So whether it's a call or a proposal or that sort of thing, but then I find out in the afternoon, I start waning. So that's when I get, you know, return my emails and, and, and planning and, and stuff like that. But I, I think it's, you know, we're, we're at the house and we all have different lives and we, you know, whether we have kids or not. So I, I think it's what works best for you. Yep. Whatever Anybody it is, keep it question? constant though. And I think I promote everybody to be able to talk if you want to talk or. Clayton works in two hour blocks. That's nice. Yep. Yeah. Make sure you get that break between those two hours so that you can actually like refocus, but yeah, totally. Yeah. If you're in flow, if you're working, like, I, I don't know, I've been in the zone a few times where I'm just like, I just go and I'll get like three or four hours done before I'll stop and take a break. Um, yeah. if, if I'm really, really in flow, I don't want to break that up. But if I'm, um, I'm, I'm like got this project and I get that done. Great. I'll take a break and then start the next one. And so yes. depends on the length of the project and what I'm working on, but yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. And Tammy said too, that she always checks the weather the night before, so she can plan a run or walks, which, which is a great way uh, to do that. I, I checked the weather this morning and at two o'clock I'm going golfing. So I'm going to cut <laughs> it's Friday. I'm going to cut out of here. Um, does anybody else have any questions for either Jeff or myself? Questions, comments, rude remarks. I'm all for them. Are you going to do this again? Yes, mm -hmm. sure. We can yeah. Clayton. <laughs> Definitely well, will. No, Definitely will. Yeah, we're, we're going to be scheduling every two weeks um, just because we found that there's so many people out there that are feeling the same things that we are. You know, Jeff and I got together and we're like, how can we help people? And, and this is 
a way that we can do it, you know, whether, whether you're managed people or, or you're on a team, but how we can make it easier for people to work, you know, better at home. Yeah. Derek uh, had a question. He said, he, I keep, I schedule hour and a half lunches, but I suck at keeping to it. Uh, need to hold myself more accountable. Does that mean Derek, that you are going over your hour and a half or you're giving yourself far less than the hour and a half? No, I, it means that I'm booking right over top of it and keep working. Ah, yeah. yeah I got to self-care. Got to feed yourself. Yeah. So I need to get better at that. Yeah. Yeah. But, but there are times too, Derek, right? Where it's just, whether you're on a meeting and it's gone over or whatnot. So, you know, but, but just having that mental mindset of like, okay, I need to take a break. I need to refocus and get back to it. Let's see here. Uh, God says he's going to go skiing if, after slaying the powder. I totally yeah, agree no, he, with that one, dude. He's up in a ski town up in, in British Columbia. And if there's 20, 20 centimeters, which I think is about 10 inches, mm -hmm. uh, the town shuts down for the until noon. So you get to go skiing. Uh, and then you show up at noon and you really don't have to check in with the boss. He knows you probably saw your boss on the hill. <laughs> that is pretty rad. Yeah. Uh, Nancy says you need more comfortable office furniture. <laughs> you get really sore. Oh yeah. Uncomfortable. Oh man. The hard part. Yeah. That hunched over at a laptop all the time. So yeah. Greg, I know you have a standing desk, right? So you yeah. can do standing or sitting. I can go downstairs if I want to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That change in elevation really, really, really helps. My twin sister has a, uh, her desk is at a treadmill. Oh, okay. And so she stands and she'll do her work and she's just walking the whole time. And I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm curious. I'm like, how many miles a day are you walking? She's like, I don't know. I'm probably up to like eight to 10 miles a day. She's like, I don't walk fast, but yeah. she just walks the whole time. Yeah. I'm like, that's crazy. Twin sister identical? Huh? You said you had a twin sister. Is she identical? Yes. She's got an amazing <laughs> beard. Puts mine to shame. <laughs> Uh, what this else we got? Nice Ford says, uh, yes, uh, adjustable desk. And I, I try and go up and down as well, too. Like, you know, for an hour, I'll be sitting and then, you know, standing. But when we do our webinars or presentations, uh, for me, it helps to stand. I just, yep. it's more comfortable. Oh, yeah. Helps I got to stand because I move around a lot because yep. I got ADHD. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and uh, Todd was saying having a, a second screen, obviously, right? We're spending so much time. If it's a bigger screen. So you're not straining your eyes or straining your neck or your body, that kind of thing. Yeah, totally true. Yeah, totally true. Anybody have any other questions before we uh, pan out? Because I know it's lunchtime and, and uh, Friday as well. No, this is, uh, this is Clayton here. This is good, oh, information, hey, good information. I've been in network marketing, working from home for 51 years, and I have found that just, you know, sometimes you can get so consumed with work that the time just goes by so quick yep. that you don't pay attention to other things like family and, and so forth. So it's a, yep. it's a walking a tightrope. And I, I've just found that time boxing has been my salvation. I just work in two hour blocks and then take an hour off. Yep. You have to, yeah, it's vitally, vitally important to take those breaks. And whether that's breaks to be with family, to check in, uh, to just take care of yourself. Absolutely integral to being successful. I like it. Yeah. Well, if anybody doesn't have any other questions, uh, feel free to reach out. Um, you can reach out to Jeff at, uh, well, it's actually in there. And if you want to type it in the chat as well, too. But like um, we were saying at the beginning, Jeff is a speaker. We're both speakers. We're both coaches. So if any of this resonates with you and you'd like to have, you know, you have a question and want to talk further, um, there's obviously a lot more information that we didn't have time to cover today. Um, but feel free. And also, too, if you want to, I know a couple of people reached out for the Friday Funnies. If you want to do that, just type your email address in the chat and uh, we will get you on that list as well because we can save this after the webinar. But uh, any, any closing words, Jeff? Thank you all for giving us uh, some of your time. We really appreciate it. We know that time is the most valuable asset we have. We hope you got something out of it. And uh, just thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate it. Yep. And I, I, I same thing here. Thank you, everybody, for being on. Uh, I, I appreciate it. Um, and any time that we can help or serve either you or people that you know, please let us know. But everybody be safe. Uh, if you're in the States, make sure you vote on yes. Tuesday. I know you have, Jeff. I already I, voted. 
I, uh, I gotta, I gotta wait six more years before I'm allowed to vote, which is weird because they let me take their tax. I have to pay my taxes, but I can't. I was vote. just going to say, we'll gladly take your taxes, but we don't let you vote. That seems yeah, very, funny. exactly. <laughs> awesome. yeah. All right, everybody. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful weekend. Be nice to each other. Yep. Um, hug your kids, tell your partner that you love them and uh, be good, but we'll be back. And if any of the time we can help, please let us know. Thanks again. Thank Thanks, you guys. Cheers. Oh, there we are. Cool, man. Looks like we still got. My brother's go. still on there. Lori's still on there. Yeah. Thanks, you guys. See you later. Hey, man. Thanks, Todd. Best luck with the powder. By the way, Todd, yeah. we've got in Coeur d'Alene, we've got yeah. five ski mountains within two hours. So I know I've skied all of them except uh, what's the one at the pass there in Montana? Lookout Pass. Lookout Pass. I, I hear that's a place to go on a good dump. Oh my gosh, it's phenomenal, and the lines are almost always. It's so it's like ski down right back on the lift. It's yeah. like nice. so cool. It's amazing. All right, I'll come. I'll come do a few laps with you, and border opens. Woohoo! Yeah, hopefully soon. Eh? Hopefully soon. Totally. Yeah. Hopefully soon. I want to go to Canada. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, we'll do. We'll go. We'll do a ski weekend. They got white water up there, and I remember one Christmas, my brother and I were up. I, it must have snowed at least two feet the one day, and I don't. I don't. I don't even think we stopped to go to the bathroom. <laughs> it was just a powder day. It was awesome. Oh. All right. Cheers, guys. Have a good All day. Right. Later, Thanks, man. Lori's still on there. Does Lori, does, do you have a question, Lori? I think you can unmute yourself. Uh... Oh, there oh, we go. There she goes. Okay. So we have attending two panelists. Oh, there we go. So it's just, thank you. Uh, I didn't get it on uh, Facebook Live, unfortunately. I don't know what was, okay. but I've, I've got a recording. So it usually takes about an hour to pop up. Cool. And then I'll, I'll just throw it on Facebook Live or uh, also on Facebook. Okay. Start it from the beginning and then just run it through till we say goodbye to everybody. Yep. And then uh, I will uh, try and get you a list of all the emails that were on. Sweet. So that you can follow up with a, with a yeah. thank you email. Follow up. I got to get better at that. Uh, I have, I, I still don't understand the whole CRM. I mean, I get it, but yeah. I, I don't, uh, I don't send out anything. So yeah. it's, it's not a useful system for me. <laughs> I, I would, I would talk to, uh, well, I, I can send you, I have HubSpot for my CRM. Mm -hmm. um, but the Aweber, so everybody that registered, there's, mm -hmm. there's a list and I can click on one button, type an email, it goes to everybody. And it, oh, okay. it, it personalizes it so I can go, hey, Jeff, or hey, Todd, or hey, Lori, yeah, right? It does it all for me. Mm -hmm. So I click, you know, a couple, it, it took me a while to learn, but I did it through uh, YouTube videos. Gotcha. So, but it, it helps, right? Because all these people now, I've got 200 people in my email who've been on these webinars mm -hmm. and I can just keep on, oh, here's our Friday funny here. Do this, yeah. do that, whatever. Yeah, so that's awesome. Well, thanks yeah. again, man. I've, uh, I got a bunch of stuff. My, uh, uh, one of my, uh, Rachel's friends asked if I did stand up comedy for high school students, mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, uh, I got a text her, right? I'm not going to call her. She would never uh -huh. respond to a call. Oh yeah. They don't respond, uh, but it's her friend Haley and they, they're going to try and, and I'm just like, wow, I got to figure out how to talk to teenagers, but I can just tell them dating stories as well too. Right. Oh my gosh. Uh, Bring up anything from the eighties. Cause they still love that generation. Oh, they still, okay. All right. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I do a lot of stuff with music. Yeah. Um, so I do something called senior seminar where I will play. I'll talk about my dad and the fact that he's been, he's 70 years old. He's at his 50. He's had his 50th high school reunion. Yeah. And he's still talking about the same things. What did, what have you been doing? And do you remember when? And those are the conversations he has. Right. And they're yeah. all, and he goes, all of them are based on music. And he goes, so I say, imagine this, imagine that you have these, this 20 year old high school uh, kid that's, you know, between high school and college, yeah, and yeah. he's going to look up what were the most popular songs back then. Oh, and okay. Do a Google search. Yeah. And, I'm, and then I'll play music and I'll be like, so this is one of the songs that my dad listened to. And yeah. it's What a Wonderful World. 
And they're like, oh, that's so sweet. And I say, yeah, you know what? Here's here's one that I got though, because I was from the greatest generation. Yeah, yeah. that'd be the 80s. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And then I'm I'll play something from the 80s, right? <laughs> and then I'll give them something and I'll be like, and at your 50 year reunion, you guys are going to be listening to this. Yeah. And then I just go through my dad's generation, my generation, their generation. And, you know, some of them are obviously I've got to update the list because it's a few years old now, but um, yeah. but it's pretty funny. Cause they're like, ah, oh, there's songs that they absolutely hate. Like I'll play uh, Justin Bieber. Uh huh. <laughs> uh huh. And they all know the words or one direction. You don't know you're beautiful. And then again, they all know the words, but then I'll be like, you know, here's the greatest song of all time. And I play journey. Um, don't stop believing. And they'll sing along. Yeah. It's yeah. Just kind of crazy. So hey, you have a couple minutes. I was uh, just... My best friend is here. So oh, okay. I'll, I'll jump oh, off. I was he just said, Oh, he said he's fine. So yeah. What do you got? Well, I was just going to see if I can get on Facebook Live and we'll just apologize and say, hey, we'll get this up. Yeah. I just want to see if this works quickly. <laughs> your best, you have two best friends? You said your best friends there. Yeah. It's my friend Chris over here. <laughs> Hi there. <laughs> hey, Chris. <laughs> he told me he, an hour ago I was his best friend, so I was just confused. <laughs> well, knowing Joe, he can multitask and juggle best friends, so I don't doubt it. <laughs> Right. <laughs> I got a weird set of skills, man. Real weird set of skills. What are you, what are you guys doing? Just chilling out? Just going to chill out a little bit. Um, Chris is getting ready. I think checking costume box. Yep. Uh, yeah. So he's, he's a, a Chris is a, a power lifter and oh, okay. like amazingly strong. And they're doing on Saturday, a costume competition for the power lifting team. Uh, nice. So are you going as Jane Fonda? Jane Fonda. <laughs> I was going to suggest Borat, but. <laughs> uh, I don't know if they like that on the bench press machine. The Borat. Well, the way some of the costume combinations are coming together, uh, I'm what, not far off from going as Borat. So it kind of worked out. <laughs> yeah. If you were in the Bor Borat and powerlifting, some muscles might pop out. <laughs> the muscle. <laughs> you, need, you were going there, Chris. I could tell. Uh, <laughs> The muscle would pop out. Uh, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Hey, yeah, no, it doesn't look like it's, uh, we're not, it's not able to go Facebook live. I don't know if it's down or whatnot, but I'll just, I'll jump on there with a quick video and, and apologize, but thanks buddy. I appreciate it. And you know, it, it, that, you know, having people engage on that chat thing was mm -hmm. so helpful because I can, I can uh, copy and paste it to you so we can follow up with these people as well too. And it just, Perfect. it seems to keep people more engaged. So we need to do that more too, I think. Yeah, I think we can actually like. I really like how you put them in. I think if we strategically put them in, no. um, as you know, there's a couple of like here's here's a drop in. Hey, type this in the chat. Yeah. Hey, you know what? If you do this, type this in the chat. Yeah, um, having yeah. those specific yeah. things to engage them, I think is pretty good. Yeah. But it looks like we got a lot of positive, uh, you know. Um, yeah, a lot, lot of interaction actually. Yeah, that's a lot of interaction, and um, I think maybe we'll try next one as a meeting. And that way I can hit one button and everybody, we're all, you know, we're a Brady Bunch at the end. Okay, cool. Yeah. I, think I can control great. keeping people's microphones off. Yeah. Kind yeah. Of I think that's a good idea too. So I'll, I'll, I'll try and play with that. But uh, I'll, when you guys are done or on Monday, let's find, and you know, if we can, if we can do this twice a month, right. Cause we got everything set up now. It's just us. Yeah. It's just 45 minutes that we got to get on. Yeah. I think it's awesome. Perfect. I think it went really well, man. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm excited. So. Thank you and uh, good to meet you, Chris. We'll uh, we'll hopefully see you soon. <laughs> awesome, All right, guys. Have Take a good care. one. Cheers. Right. Bye. Bye.